Hi there, and welcome to Coffee with Phil, where our goal is to help you live a life of purpose on purpose. Walking with God sounds easy, but how many of you know it never follows the scripture prepared? In this podcast, Phil shares stories from his personal journey in the hopes that his experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly, will help you as you walk with God on your own journey. Grab your coffee and enjoy this practical and personal episode with your podcast host, Phil Strong. Well, hi and welcome to the podcast. Welcome to Coffee with Phil. We're straight into it today and I'm enjoying my coffee. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you're enjoying your coffee. I hope you're enjoying uh, the richness of the flavor. Uh, coffee with a friend this morning and we sat outside in the fresh air and she was confessing to me that uh, she'd arrived a lot earlier uh, and bypassed the, cof- the coffee for uh, another activity with her son. But standing there, she could smell the preparation of the coffee and her appreciation of it was such that those that she was with actually noticed. And, <laughs> and they made a comment, said to her, uh, you're after coffee, aren't you? Are you heading that way? Uh, what's my point? We can appreciate coffee so many different ways. Um, as I roast coffee at home, um, I extract the fumes because uh, obviously it's a cooking process. So there's a small amount of fumes, smoke, uh, as the gases burn off. Uh, and I use the, uh, the kitchen extractor for that, uh, which means that the beautiful aroma of the coffee beans, car- the sugar in the coffee beans caramelizing and the 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 warming up of the beans over a period of time, that beautiful smell that many of you will recognize, well, that just gets pumped out the back of the house, out the vent. And uh, so my neighbors, they often also get to enjoy when I'm roasting coffee because there's so many different ways that you can enjoy your coffee. And here I am enjoying mine, uh, flat white this afternoon, managed to pull off some pretty beautiful latte art on the top, and I guess you have to ask, is it still latte art if you're having a flat white? Well, that's a very good question, isn't it? Uh, maybe, maybe I'm using the incorrect term. Maybe it's milk art or barista art. Uh, who knows? Anyway, uh, today was good. And uh, look, I'm having a great day. Had some great catch-ups and uh, ticking a few things off. And got a, got a couple of other meetings uh, later in today. So... Really trying to land the week well. Today's my last day of the week, heading into my weekend. So looking forward to it. This is Coffee with Phil episode 96. And we're tracking very quickly towards the number C, which is, of course, 100. And I'm looking forward to that milestone. It's a personal milestone for me. Thanks for being on the journey as a listener. Thanks for sharing the podcast with your friends and your family. Thanks for recommending that they listen to specific specific episodes. Because I'm sure as a listener, you're hearing what I'm sharing and then you're thinking, oh, I know someone that needs to hear this. Well, if that's today, especially with the topic of today, uh, then uh, today's a good one to text to a friend and say, hey, I enjoyed this and I reckon you will too. And I thank you in advance for sharing the podcast. Today, episode 96, let's get into it. I've got a half a dozen or more thoughts to share with you today under the heading, Can You Handle Rebuke? Now, this is an interesting uh, topic because I reckon in our woke and broke society, in our well-to-do but not very well-meaning Uh, culture of everyone's okay, everyone deserves a chance, and everyone can just, you know, the old saying, you do you, I think is the worst thing that we ever did. Because what we're doing is giving room to people that want to be the ruler of their lives and the master of their destruction without making them accountable or making them uh open to rebuke which is of course correction and i want to uh you know like i don't want to labor the point i'm just speaking my opinion but you know we 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 faff around we're soft and and cuddly and we're like oh there there you'll be okay you did your best but sometimes a rebuke 
is absolutely necessary. And I will close with that thought uh, at the end of the podcast. If you make it that far, in fact, if you haven't already uh, decided to check out. Uh, So can you handle a rebuke? What's it like? What does it feel like when someone gives you a rebuke? When was the last time you had a rebuke? Um, I just spent a day uh, with a bunch of leaders, uh, church leaders, and in the room was a couple of prophets who were ministering and sharing. And for us, for me, it was like, you know, sitting in the room with a getting a slap around the face and a kick up the bum, and then you go, oh, thank you so much. That was awesome. I loved today. Oh, I got so much from it. What's my point is, you know, when you're in the right environment and you know that the message is given in love, it can be quite abrupt. It can be quite harsh. It can be quite confronting, but you're willing to accept that it's good for you. And that's the attitude we should have towards a rebuke. You know, uh, should we tell our kids off? Yes, we should. Should we do that when they're adults? Yes, we should. You know, um, schools, schools should have open permission to correct and rebuke as they see fit for the purpose of the development of a child. Am I condoning physical violence or discipline? I'm not even talking about that what I'm talking about is boundaries and enforcement of boundaries for the benefit of all. You know, we've got to conduct ourselves in community for the benefit of the community, not just uh, the weak ones in the midst of it. So, can you handle a rebuke? I remember this time years ago. This is a long time ago. I was at work. I've I've had many rebukes, by the way. Uh, I'm just thinking of this one. Uh, I, I I was in a in an organisation and thought I was doing quite well. I was I was slow to the uptake, but I was I was I was in a completely different world than I was used to, and I was embracing the new culture. But I was, you know, I was trying to learn my way, but I was I was taking liberties with it that were beyond what was uh, acceptable. And so the owner of the company pulls me in and says, oh, we're going to do some coaching. And I was like, fantastic. I really respected this guy. Um, he was an absolute master craftsman in, in the industry we were in, and I, and I was looking forward to it. And he sat me down, and we, we were watching some teaching videos. And then he started tearing strips off me, um, just really, I suppose, highlighting what um, I wasn't doing and how I hadn't submitted myself to the systems that were in place for my success. And it was incredibly confronting. And um, you know what made it even worse was it was my birthday. And it was the first year I'd worked there, so I hadn't told anyone it was my birthday. And uh, so I, I left the office that day feeling like a piece of absolute garbage until I processed it. And I understood that what he was seeking to achieve was not just correction, but redirection. And that's the first uh, thought that I've got on my list here to share with you, is the ultimate goal of a rebuke and why you might want to be open to a rebuke, uh, there's my advice for you, is because the rebuke is an opportunity for correction and redirection. And so in the example that I gave you, this guy who was a mentor and became a friend and, and is a guy that I still have the um, utmost respect for uh, 23 years later, um, you know, I just have, have an admiration because he was prepared to confront He was prepared to correct. And whilst he was abrasive, and I felt like I got uh, put through a mincer, um, you know, his goal was to redirect me towards my own success. And, and, and sure, I went away smarting. You know, you've had that feeling where you got a smack on the bum as a kid and it just stung. It stung like crazy. Um, well, eventually the sting goes away and then you get to process what happened. And that's what, that's what happened for me. It was a, it was a correction with a, with a redirection and I got to really think about why. And, and in that, I got to choose how I was going to respond. And uh, so I want to speak to a couple of these thoughts, and uh, I don't know what your situation is, I'm not talking just professionally, I'm talking in a relationship, I'm talking in a friendship, I'm talking in a workplace context, Uh, you can apply this however you like, and I am speaking as one who has had many rebukes, uh, and who has also had to deliver many rebukes. So uh, I've, I've, I've lived on both sides of this and I'm, I'm hoping it helps you. 
and I will pull it back to faith at the end. So for those of you that are wanting a Bible, you'll get it. Don't you worry. Uh, So let's get on to number two. Uh, In the midst of a rebuke, uh, sometimes we can react. And a reaction is is like when you pull back. You know, when I remember mum used to give us a smack on the hand with a wooden spoon uh, because that was the uh, most effective way for her to uh, dis- apply physical discipline. Now, I'm an old guy, so I was raised with physical discipline and I have no problems with that whatsoever. Uh, mum couldn't hit me hard enough on my bum to make an effect. So, you know, she'd say, hold out your hand and she would hold the end of my fingers and she would smack the palm of my hand with a wooden spoon. And it stung if I didn't pull my hand out of the way. And, and so a reaction, what I'm saying is a reaction is when you pull your hand away in anticipation of what's coming. And I'm saying, don't do that. Don't do that with a rebuke. If you feel like you're in a situation where someone's about to give you a a correction and a redirection, which is a rebuke, don't pull away. Embrace the opportunity and be mature in the process. So the second point I've got for you here is to stop and consider the feedback with two thoughts. So this is feedback and... um, you know, just so many, so many things going through my head here. I just want to also um, make sure you understand that I'm not condoning someone doing this in an abusive way. You know, yelling and shouting and spitting and um, and pulling you down and degrading you as a person. Uh, so let's just put the extremes aside and talk about uh, a, a healthy rebuke that's motivated by love. So the first thing to acknowledge is how am I feeling? And uh, we've been doing a lot of work on this with Emotionally Healthy Relationships course that I'm on, uh, is getting in touch with our feelings. And yes, even guys can do that. Um, but the question is, what am I feeling? What, let's put a name on it. Am I fearful? Uh, and if so, if I'm afraid, what am I afraid of? Um, am I feeling angry? If I'm angry, why am I angry? Do I feel judged? Do I feel discarded? Uh, am I afraid that they don't love me? How am I feeling? Obviously, you might feel sad. You might feel disappointed in yourself. You might feel um, unfairly accused, depending on the situation. So, so the first thing is get in touch with your feelings. But the second thing I'm really wanting to encourage you in is how are they feeling? What's the motivation behind what they're doing? You know, it's easy to reflect on this uh, as an old guy now and as a parent, but I remember my dad used to say things like, man, this is hurting me more than it's hurting you. And I'm like, oh, you reckon? But the point is that uh, I know he was disciplining or rebuking me for my own good, uh, and he didn't enjoy it. He didn't enjoy the fact that he had to do it, but he chose to do it because he loved me. So stop and consider, how is this person feeling? Is it your boss? Is it your husband or wife? Is it a good friend that cares about you? And so how are they feeling in this? There's a time when I've had to confront some friends and I felt awkward about it. I felt upset. I felt nervous. Um, But I knew that uh, for the sake of the relationship, I wanted to do it. Um... And 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 yet that person didn't stop initially and consider how I was feeling. And so after a while, we actually eventually got to that. Um, so so first and foremost, don't react. Don't react. It's okay to respond, but a reaction is a sudden jerk of an action. Uh, and by that I mean you know that quicking pulling away of your hands or um, going on the defensive straight away and attacking the other person. Um, that's a reaction and that's immature. So don't don't do that. So stop and consider how does this make me feel? Why am I feeling this way? And then what's the other person feeling and why might they be feeling that? Now it's really hard to do that in the split second of the moment, which means you've got to slow everything down. Don't rush because when you rush, it turns into a fight and a fight is not what I'm talking about. I'm going to keep moving quickly. Number three, uh, I would say this, own the role that you've played in the story and the end point so far. So you are obviously a party to this if, if there's a rebuke coming. There's something you did, there's something you didn't do. There's something you said, there's something you didn't say. There's an action that's been taken and a consequence and you just need to own that you're part of it. Now, if the rebuke and correction leads to redirection and a reestablishment of a healthy space, then that's, that's, that's awesome. But you've got to consider that that has to happen with two mutually consenting, loving adults. Now, in a 
parent child situation that's 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 not the same because you know if you're rebuking correcting and and redirecting a 3 year old there's a different level of maturity and responsibility and and so this does not apply in that situation you your parenting is parenting what i'm talking about is 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 working through this discipline process for the sake of making life better and making the community the partnership the friendship the connection making it more healthy so you just got to own up you know hey look uh you're feeling angry or upset and i'm really sorry about that and I'm here to listen, I'm owning this, so can we keep talking about this? That kind of response is far more mature than, you don't know what you're talking about. I can't believe you're attacking me like this. I didn't do anything wrong. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not owning it. Look, this conversation is happening for a reason, and they're talking to you for a reason. The fourth thing that I want to say, and this is a cliche we've been using for years, but always seek to understand before seeking to be understood. You have two ears and one mouth. The ratio of listening to speaking should be two to one. You should listen. You, sh- you can ask questions. Can I ask something to clarify what you're saying? Is it okay if I reflect back what I hear you say? Can I ask you something? Those kinds of questions or statements are demonstrating that you're seeking to understand the other person instead of reacting or just um, not even listening, but preparing your answer in your head. You know, I, um, I got to admit it's one of my weaknesses. Sometimes I listen so I can respond. You know, I've already got my answer. I'm just waiting for them to take a breath so I can start talking. Um, that's not going to help in a rebuke situation. So I'm listening. Can I ask you to continue? Uh, can I ask a question on that? Can I, can I get some more information? Could you give me an example? Um, is there anything else you'd like to say about this situation? Always seek to understand before seeking to be understood. And then number five, I almost made this the title of the podcast. Uh, sometimes a slap on the face is good for us. You know, sometimes we just need to have our chain yanked. Sometimes we need a wake-up call. Sometimes we need to be snapped out of our false reality or our ignorance of how other people are feeling so that we have a chance to correct and redirect our behavior. And I'm not condoning physical violence by saying this. Please don't go around slapping your husband. But I am saying sometimes a wake-up call is necessary. Now, um, there are safe ways to do that, and um, Kathy and I, over the years, have developed safe language. Um, you know, we might wave a white flag, not literally, but say, hey, I'm waving a white flag here, I just, I just want to come in peace, but I want to come and have a conversation with you. I know you're upset, but I want to have a conversation. Or, um, you know, uh, from... I keep your love on Danny Silk and, and his program about defining the called defining the relationship. Uh, he speaks about feeling connected, and so say, so, "Hey, I'm I'm not feeling connected right now. Can we speak about that? It's my feeling. I'm not feeling connected, so I would like to talk about it. And and for us, that's become safe language because it's not a blame language. It's a feeling language, and it's personal. And we have to respect how the other person feels because their feelings are a result of partly how we're acting. So choose a safe way to do it. And a safe way is not a slap on the face. But sometimes an honest, upfront, confronting conversation is like a slap in the face, which wakes us up and helps us to commit to an uncomfortable question that will be good for us in the long run. Mm. Don't let the coffee go cold. So number five, sometimes a slap on the face is good for us. Number six, I just alluded to the concept of connection. You know, if, I, if, 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 if I'm not feeling like something's resolved or I've got something I want to talk about, I might, it might lead to me feeling disconnected from Kathy. So we use this language. I'm sharing it with you um, as, as an example of how we use it. But what I would say this is I recently had a situation that was quite confronting and it needed to be quite honest, um, but I, I had an intention in that conversation to protect the connection at all costs. My mindset before I went into the conversation is regardless of what is said 
or the process that follows, I will seek to protect this connection with this person at all costs. I will fight for the connection. I will pray for the connection. I do not want this relationship broken as a result of the conversation that I knew was coming. And praise God, I guess both of us were praying for that conversation happened because it went really well. And uh, the fruit of that conversation is um, is that we're still connected and still relating really, really well. So, but but sometimes we go into those conversations with no desire to protect the connection or the relationship they've got, and we just start swinging. We swing a bat, or we sling accusations, or we we sling examples and throw them like stones. That attacking mindset does not honor and respect the person that you're speaking with. And I'm, I'm really speaking about this in the context of um, having, you know, these conversations with people that we love, that we want to cherish them, you know, like if I'm giving feedback to someone in a, in a business because they trashed my car or they, they abused my trust or something, that's quite different than if I'm having a conversation with a staff member or if Kathy and I are working through some challenges or I want to I wanna speak to someone in my community uh, about their behavior. So what I want to do first and foremost is I want to go into the conversation with a desire to protect the connection. And then this is a this is something that I've had to um, practice. Uh, but then at the end of the conversation, I want to seek connection and confirmation of connection as the final thing. So, um, so you know, you you go there because you want you want to you want to confront something, you want to have a correction or redirection, or maybe someone's doing this to you. Even even when I have to have difficult conversations, I want to make sure. That the final thing that I do in this conversation is I reconfirm that the connection is in a good place. So I'll be saying something like, hey, this has not been an easy conversation, but I want to thank you for addressing it. Or I want to thank you for participating. I want to thank you for being honest. I want to thank you for giving me that feedback. Um, I'd really like to keep working on this with you. Um, But as we finish up here... um, can I just confirm that you feel like we're connected, that you feel like we can work on this together uh, rather than a us and them kind of mindset? Do you feel connected? And, and, and by finishing the conversation that way, I'm absolutely establishing that that's really important to me, that I don't want this to drift. I don't want this to be feel like it's, even if it's unresolved, I don't want it to feel like we're broken. I want to feel like if it's unresolved, we're together and we're working on it together. Um, so, so number six is all about protecting the connection and, and having that mindset as I go into the conversation and through the conversation. I must protect this connection. I will not behave in a way that could break or make this connection unhealthy. And then as I finish, I'm making sure that the... Um, the connection is reconfirmed. And I use that language. I just say, hey, I just want to make sure we feel connected as we go. You know, like this is, this is important to me. You're important to me. Our connection is important to me. And, we, you know, we're agreeing to catch up next week on this, but I just want to make sure in the meantime you feel connected. That's the kind of language I use. Okay, I promised you some Bible. And I want to finish with this. Um, and the key point in this is that God disciplines those he loves. I don't know if you've ever had a a rebuke from the Lord. I know I have. I know I have, and I know what it feels like. It does feel like a slap on the face. But I want to refer you to Hebrews chapter 12 in the beginning. And But first I want to refer you also to the quote that the writer of Hebrews includes at the beginning of Hebrews 12. And the writer, whoever it is, is quoting Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. And chapter 3 of Proverbs, uh, verse 11 and 12 says this, My child, do not despise discipline from the Lord and do not loathe his rebuke. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. 
So there is a key point that I want to leave you with here. And I want to refer back to Hebrews 12. Because, you know, um, at this point, uh, the writer says after the quote, he says, endure your suffering as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there that a father does not discipline? But if you do not experience discipline, something all sons have shared in, then you are illegitimate and are not sons. So the key point here is if God is not rebuking you, it's not because you're perfect. It's because you haven't come into sonship. And I say that to uh, invite you to present yourself before God and to help ask him to highlight things where he might choose to bring correction and redirection. And be careful what you ask for. But, you know, I think if, if you love God and if you'd respect him as a father and you are willing to submit to him as your heavenly father, then you should have confidence that anything God highlights in your life and anything he rebukes you over for the purpose of correction and redirection is for your benefit. It will work out good for you. Though it may not be comfortable, it certainly will be good for you. And uh, I just, I, I, can, I can think of a dozen examples where the Lord's done that, uh, where he's called me into a place of correction. And I've then had to go and apologize to someone and have a conversation and a prayer time with them um, because I was willing to submit to God. You know, as I keep quoting A.W. Tozer, he says, the Lord is either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. So if God wants to invite you into a place of correction, uh, then you should embrace that. That would be my encouragement. Oh, well, I hope you can handle rebuke. I hope you learn to live seeking correction and redirection uh, for your benefit. And uh, Lord, uh, look, I pray that if you're doing that in a community, that you do it in a safe and healthy way, that you learn some safe communication techniques. Don't just go in there attacking someone, but go in there and, and, and invite a conversation that will be beneficial for both parties. All right? Um, but the best thing you can do is learn this by learning it from God uh, and his journey with you. And you do that in the private and then the benefits will flow publicly. Well, I'm going to sign off, finish my coffee and enjoy the rest of my afternoon. I hope you're having fun wherever you are. I look forward to continuing this journey with you as we navigate life and faith and making our faith real and living a life of purpose on purpose. So I wish you all the best. God bless you wherever you are. And I look forward to catching up with you real soon. Until then, you take care now.